those of us who are those of us who are struggling and we pray oh god that you would strengthen be with us now we pray in jesus name amen amen and amen all right all right uh, if you have your bibles <clears throat> and I, the bible is near you i want to invite you to turn with me to the book of genesis Genesis chapter three, and I'm going to read in your hearing very quickly, verses six through 13, well, six through 12. Genesis chapter three, verses six through 12. <clears throat> I'm reading in your hearing, and the Bible says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat? <clears throat> and the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. And the Lord added a rich blessing to the reading of his word. I wanna to talk to you this evening uh, on the subject, families under attack. Families under attack. Uh, for thousands of years now, the devil has attacked the family with the vengeance. He is relentless in his attempt to destroy the family, especially the black family. For the devil knows that if he can destroy the family, he can destroy the home. And if he can destroy the home, he can destroy the neighborhood. And if he can destroy the neighborhood, he can destroy the city, the city, the, the, the state, the state, the, the country. And if he can destroy the country, he can destroy the world. But it all begins with the family. Therefore, therefore, the devil is relentless in his attack on the family. This family attack began with Adam and Eve. You know the story, so I don't need to take time to go into all the detail, but, but just as a refresher, Adam and Eve were placed in the garden after being created by God. They were given specific instructions to take care of the garden of Eden. And they were told that they could eat from every tree of the garden except from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They allowed the devil who presented himself in the form of a snake to deceive them into destroying or dis disobeying God. And that disobedience brought sin to the human race. From that day to this one, the devil has attacked the family with the intentions of destroying it. How has the devil attacked the family how has he attacked the family uh, and with his intentions to destroy it well he has attacked it in a number of ways one of the ways that he has attacked the family is by devaluing women let me say that again by devaluing women for hundreds of years uh, the black american woman has been devalued it goes all the way back to slavery when women were used as breeding tools for the white master. They were treated like objects. They, they were not treated as people of value. And that mindset has been passed down from generation to generation. So much so that even today, women are being devalued by male and female. There are men and women who believe that women are only good for sex are to be used as sex objects. Therefore, women are devalued in the way they are treated, mistreated, and talked about. 
They are devalued in the songs that rappers rap about. Songs such as No Hands by Waka Flocka, Girl Drop It to the Floor, I Love the Way Your Booty Go. Songs by Lil Wayne, one of the most vile mouth women degrading rappers in the music industry. Song by Snoop Dogg, which say that women ain't nothing but hoes and tricks. All this plays into the devaluing of women, so much so that even women are referring to themselves as bees and hoes. Sad to say that many women have allowed the rappers of the music industry to define them. But if you allow someone to convince you that you are a hoe, then you will behave like a hoe. You will walk like a hoe. You will talk like a hoe. You will dress like a hoe and allow yourself to be treated like a hoe. If you would allow me, just let me, just let me take a moment and see if I can detox some sister's brain of some of the foolishness that has been programmed into it by society. Let me remind some sister listening today that you are a value, that you have value. You might not be the prettiest person in the room. You might not be the smartest. You, you might not have the best shape. Now, as a matter of fact, shape wear might be challenged by your shape. Nevertheless, you have value. Short or tall, big or small, size 10 or three times 10, you have value. And that value is not determined by how cute you are or how smart you are or what you have, but you have value because you were created in the image of God and it doesn't get any higher than that. Genesis 1 and verse 27 the Bible says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Sisters, you need to understand that you have value and you have more to offer than sex. As a matter of fact, it is to your advantage to keep yourself to yourself until you're married. Why? Because sex outside of marriage decreases your value. As a single woman, you will meet a lot of cookie monsters. And the cookie monsters will tell you whatever he thinks you want to hear in order to gain access to your chocolate chips. I'm talking in codes tonight because there might be children's listening. Uh, the cookie monster will tell you how fine you are, how beautiful you are, that you look like Beyonce. And the reality is you look nothing like Beyonce. You look more like what you say, but because the cookie monster is after the cookies, he will, he will stroke your ego. And when he gets the cookies, his respect for you goes down. His behavior toward you changes. You don't hear how fine you are anymore because just like a new car that has been driven off the lot, you have decreased in value. So what am I saying to your sisters? I'm saying keep your cookies wrapped up and sealed tight until you're married because the greatest gift that you can give your husband on wedding night is your virginity. Well, somebody might be saying it's too late for that. I'm no longer a virgin. Well, I got good news for you. And that is my God is in the recycling business. <laughs> and if you would just totally surrender to him and make up your mind to seal up the cookie jar until marriage, he will recycle you. And on your wedding night, your husband might not get the original version, but he will be blessed with the next best thing, a recycled one. I'm simply saying, sisters, don't let anyone devalue you by what they say to you or what they say about you and the way they treat you because you have value and that value comes from the almighty God. There's an attempt to devalue you and it is a part of the attack on the family. The second tool that the devil is using in his attack on the family is gender confusion. Let me say it again and get in case you missed it. The second tool that the enemy is using on the family, using in his attack, is gender confusion. 
there is a growing number of male and females who are suffering from gender confusion. In Genesis 2 and verse 7, the Bible tells us, and the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. In Genesis chapter 2, 21 and 22, the Bible says, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto man. Genesis 1 and 27 says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. When God created us, he, cre he created us with certain features. He created us with certain body parts, which uh, uniquely distinguishes us as male or female. These unique body parts determine our gender. Uh, throughout the years, the enemy has worked with much success to create gender confusion. When I was young, we had a little nursery rhyme about Jack and Jill. Some of you might remember it and some of you might be too young, but, but it said Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water and Jack fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after him. Some of you remember this, don't you? <laughs> But today, things have changed. Today, Jack and Jill ain't going up the hill together. Jack is going up with Bill, and Jill is going, in, going up with Camille. A quick look at society will reveal that many men are confused as it relates to their gender. They think that they should be women. He wants to be a her, so he behaves like a woman go get him a man and assume the role of a woman in the relationship. There are women who are suffering from gender confusion. They feel that they should be, they should be men, so they go get them a woman and assume the role of a man in the relationship. Sometimes they get married and refer to each as my wife. This gender confusion, my brothers and sisters, is yet another tool in the attack on the family. But then there is a third, there's a third tool that the devil is using in his attack on the family, especially in the black family. And that is making sure that our black men are absent from the home. Thousands of studies conducted have revealed a negative impact on children with no fathers present in the home. Studies reveal that children uh, grow, who grow up in homes where no father is present have five times the average suicide rate. They have an increased rate in depression. They have an increased incarceration rate. They have decreased education level. They have a lower average income level. They have a higher divorce rate and they have an increased substance abuse rate, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on and on. The presence of black men or the presence of fathers is critical to the stability or the stable development of our children. Many of today's children are messed up because they grow up in homes without a father or a good father figure. And believe you me, that messed up children grow up to be messed up adults. Boys need their fathers to teach them how to be men, and girls need their fathers to teach them how women are to be treated and respected. One of the things that the devil is using to keep men absent from the home is incarceration. The high incarceration uh, rate has had serious impact on the African-American family. From time to time, you will hear a black male say that the system is designed to keep a black man down. Whether you believe it or not, history shows it to be true. After the Emancipation Proclamation of 1863 that outlawed slavery, the Southern whites found themselves in a tough situation. They, no longer re, uh, they could no longer rely on free labor of slaves to work their fields, and they were too lazy to work them themselves. So they came up with various laws to criminalize black men and boys, and these laws were known as black codes. Black code laws 
were designed to limit the freedom of African Americans and ensure uh, their availability as a cheap labor force after slavery was abolished. One of the black code laws stated that if a free slave could not prove that he was employed at the beginning of the year, he could be fined or put in prison. Now, if they were fined, they were fined because they didn't have a job. And if they didn't have a job, they couldn't pay, couldn't pay the fine. So therefore, they ended up being put in prison. And once they were in prison, they were leased out to the railroads and plantation owners by the prison. They were leased out to work their fields and railroads. I'm, I'm told that at a certain time of the year, when it was time to plant a harvest crop, the white policemen, many of whom were former slave owners, would go out and arrest black men and boys so that they would have enough labor to rent out to the plantation owners. So incarceration became big business and we supplied most of the free labor. So they got free labor while our families deteriorated because fathers were absent from the home. In the early 1980s, we were in the height of the war on drugs. Many men, especially black men, were incarcerated and given unfair sentences as compared to their white counterparts. There were stiffer sentences uh, for the, uh, for those who use crack, the common drug used among black versus those who use powder cocaine, the common drug used among mainly whites. Many black men receive a minimum sentence of five years for five grams of crack, but it took 500 grams of powder cocaine in order to receive five years in prison. What is the difference between the two drugs? Crack is smoked and powder cocaine was snorted, injected or swallowed. Crack was used mainly by blacks while powder cocaine was used by whites. I'm talking about how the, how I'm talking about the role that incarceration has had on the family. When one had received a jail or prison sentence for a year or more, he is labeled as a, he is labeled as a felon. And what the system does in reality is make that person a second class citizen. He cannot get federal housing or live with anyone who is receiving federal housing. He cannot receive federal student aid to go to school. He cannot vote. It is difficult for him to get a driver's license. It is hard or, or he has a hard time getting a job because very few people are willing to give him a chance. And if he can't get a job, he can't support a family. And if he can't get a job, he can't eat, which in most cases will push him back into a life of crime, which will land him back in jail or prison. The devil has used that as his attack on the family. And now the fourth and final tool that the devil is using in his attack against the family is division. You might remember that when God called Adam on the carpet about the forbidden fruit, Adam blamed Eve and Eve turned around and blamed the serpent. This is a first class example of division within the family. If you are familiar with the children of Adam and Eve, you know that Cain, their oldest son, killed Abel, his younger brother. The devil created division within the family and that division kept this family from being the best that it could be. The division playbook is the same playbook that is being used today, especially on families. Why is it that Mexicans can come to the US barely able to speak English, live in a one or two bedroom apartment, go out and work, put their resources together, and before you know it, they have a Mexican restaurant. Why is it that Jamaicans can come and quickly set up a Jamaican restaurant? Why is it that the Chinese can come and before you know it, they are operating a Chinese restaurant? Why is it that the Italians can come and do the same? Why is it that the Indians can come and own hotel chains, but black people can rarely come together to eat a simple meal? 
Are they any smarter? Are the other races any smarter? No. Are they any better? No. The only difference is that they can come together and they understand the importance of families working together. They don't go years mad with their brother or sister. They don't rob their children of the privilege of a relationship with their aunt, cousin, or uncle because mama or daddy fell out with their sister or brother years ago over some stupid stuff that don't even matter. They don't get on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and run down family when there is a problem or disagreement within the family. Family don't talk about families. Families talk to families. Divisions within families don't build up families. Divisions tear families down. And this applies to the church family as well as the biological family. As a matter of fact, the word division means separating into parts. Everybody knows that when something is divided into parts, the parts are weaker than the whole. You might not believe this, but, but, but division has been built into the minds of African Americans. Way back when we were taken from the motherland, the process began. Our ancestral families were sold to various plantations. Mothers were sold to one plantation and fathers were sold to other plantations. Sisters and brothers were sold to different masters. The family bond that existed in Africa was killed in America because we were intentionally divided. And because of that division, Blacks in America were not able to continue the family bond that was so strong in the motherland. So how can we ward off this attack on our family? We can ward off this attack by recognizing the inherent value of women, by treating them with respect and, and, and by demanding respect if you are a woman. How do we ward off the attack of the enemy? We can ward off the attack by avoiding being swept up in gender confusion like so many in the world today. How can we ward off the attack of the enemy on the family? We can ward off his attack by avoid uh, uh, being swept up in the gender confusion and making sure as fathers, we are in the home helping to raise our children and by working together in the home to keep out division. This, my brothers and sisters, is how we are able to ward off the attack of the enemy, but it requires us to work because the enemy, the enemy is trying his very best to destroy the family. May God help us as family to be strong, to be unified, to be sober-minded, to, to work together and love one another so that we may represent the family that God has created us to be in these last days. May God bless you and may God bless your family. Let us pray together. Our Father, now God, we thank you for families. We thank you, oh God, for the reminder that the enemy has attacked the family, that the enemy understands that if he can destroy the family, he destroys the home. The enemy understands, Lord, and if he can destroy the family, he has us. So, Father, we pray now for families. We pray that you would strengthen families. We pray, oh God, that every family under the sound of my voice will be strengthened and that whatever problem might be in the family that you resolve. In families where there is division, we pray that you will bring about unity. In families where there is, there is trouble, we pray that you will bring about peace. Uh, in families where children are gone astray, we pray that you will re reunite them back to their family. We ask, oh God, that when you are seen coming in the clouds, that we will be able to stand alone with our families and declare, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. We ask, oh God, that you will strengthen the families just now. And we'll be careful to give you the glory, the honor, and praise. 
Forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings, we pray. In Jesus' name, that all God's people say amen and amen. Amen. If you enjoyed the word tonight by Pastor Black, unmute your buttons and just say amen. 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 We were blessed by that strong word uh, of God tonight. We thank you all for coming on. Don't forget tomorrow night, Pastor James Norman. And also, we're glad to have even visitors on here. We may have a visiting pastor on here, Pastor Celeste Jackson, my good friend. And uh, say hello, Pastor Jackson, to you. And God bless everybody and others that are coming on. I don't know. God bless you. And uh, let's pray for tomorrow. Our closing prayer, our benediction, will be by our own elder, Keelum Crum. And he's live from Oakwood University. There you go, elder. Thank you so much, Pastor. Uh, let us pray. Loving God, we're so grateful for this opportunity, Lord. We thank you for Pastor Black who has shared the word with us, oh God. Lord, we're asking that you allow us to take heed to tonight's message, oh God, that we'll be able to apply to our hearts and live by it and walk by it, oh God. Lord, we're asking that as we leave this Zoom, God, help us never to leave your presence. Oh Lord, give us a clear mind, give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Oh Lord, and as we prepare to close our eyes tonight to go to sleep, give us uh, give us a good sleep, oh God. Allow us to sleep peacefully and forgive us for all of our sins. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Good night, everybody. Let's continue to spread the word. Uh, and thank you, Pastor Black, again, for a powerful word tonight. God bless you all. Thanks for coming on. God bless. <laughs>